They were creamy white in color and consistent in size and relation to each other. I got out of the car. There was no sound of any engine noise. A slight red glow could be seen from these lights as they disappeared from view over the horizon. The officers immediately contacted surrounding air bases and air traffic control centers to find out what had been flying in the area that might account for the sighting. They drew a blank. There were no known aircraft in the vicinity at that time. Nick cross-checked this dramatic report with an account called in by another civilian near RAF Cosford at around the same time. It exactly matched what the two RAF police officers had seen. Creamy white lights and the unidentified object flying at an altitude of 900 to 1,000 feet. Then another extraordinary eyewitness account landed on Nick's desk. This one was from RAF Shawbury, 20 miles from RAF Cosford. The witness was a meteorological or MET officer. From RAF Cosford, the object moved quickly to the next military base, Shawbury. It was seen by the MET officer here, and the report states that he saw the lights, observed them travel towards him over the airfield, moving erratically at hundreds of miles per hour, unlike any aircraft. He described the lights as being narrow, like a laser beam, and he said it appeared to be searching for something on the ground. He'd been a Met officer for eight years and had never seen anything like it before. A Met officer at RAF Shawbury. Two RAF policemen at RAF Cosford. Men who were used to seeing a multitude of aircraft on and over their bases. These were the people who usually helped Nick explain UFO sightings. But what they reported on the night in question was very clear. A low flying craft of a type they had never seen before. Nick had to establish whether there was anything in the air over the RAF bases at the time of these eyewitness reports. At any given time, we've got an extremely clear idea of what's flying in our airspace. We have a network of civil and military radar installations, and we have the space tracking radar at the Ballistic Missile Early Warning Center at RAF Filingdales. London's Central Air Traffic Control Center at West Drayton had radar records that clearly identified an aircraft over RAF Shawbury. David Clark, UFO investigator, thinks this provides the answer. If you actually look at the, uh, the Ministry of Defence file, the RAF did a, a radar re a rerun of the, um, of the radar picture for, of the particular evening where the UFOs had been sighted. The result that came back from West Drayton actually identifies an aircraft overhead at RAF Shawbury at exactly the time. It's there in black and white in the file. 2.40 a.m. or 1.40 Zulu time at Shawbury, aircraft overhead, squawk. Which, so presumably this UFO was actually talking to air traffic control. This document here sets out a picture of the aerial activity that evening. I had gone to the air traffic control specialists and asked for a breakdown. What had been flying that night? Here it is, item by item. So we were able to have a look at this and see whether anything here might explain the UFO sightings. This line entry here is particularly interesting because it does talk about an aircraft overhead Shawbury. However, the crucial piece of information is in the last three digits. That's the flight level. And what this shows is that the aircraft was at a height of 20,000 feet. 20,000 feet was not what the two RAF policemen at Cosford or the Met officer at RAF Shawbury described seeing. They put the UFO at an altitude of around 1,000 feet. That's a significant difference. An aircraft at 20,000 feet would be difficult, if not impossible, to describe clearly. But at 1,000 feet, many people, 
let alone servicemen with this level of aviation knowledge, would be able to identify a known craft. These witnesses would have eliminated the obvious before putting their reputations on the line and reporting a UFO. Nick knew that a single high altitude airliner couldn't explain sightings of a detailed unidentified craft seen across Britain for over five hours. But he was running out of ideas as to what might provide the answers. Nick Pope had one final possibility. Could this mysterious craft have been some form of top secret prototype aircraft unknown to even Air Force personnel? At any given time, of course, the UK will be testing prototype aircraft. But the key thing here is we know where we test our own bits of kit. If something had been seen and reported as a UFO, we would have simply been told, look, this is one of ours, there's no need to look any further. Prototype aircraft, or black projects as they're called, have been the cause of many cases of alien mania. Before they were revealed to the public, America's B-2 stealth bomber and the F-117 stealth fighter aircraft were often reported as UFOs. The extreme secrecy surrounding the development and testing of prototype military aircraft fuels the conspiracy theorists and those who want to believe that we are not alone. But Nick Pope was neither of those, and as the man running the MOD's UFO desk, he could ask a serious question in the right places. Did Britain have a test aircraft over RAF Shawbury and RAF Cosford on the night of March the 30th, 1993. The answer he got back was no. That left only one other possible line of inquiry. Could a foreign government have been flying covert tests of a new aircraft over British Air Force bases without permission? For some years, there had been rumors of a secret, hypersonic, prototype aircraft, codenamed Aurora, operated by the Americans over the UK. We made inquiries through the embassy and were given government-to-government -government assurances on this. Indeed, the issue was raised in Parliament and definitive answers were given. Aurora did not exist. But Nick wanted to double-check. On April 22nd, 1993, nearly a month after the mysterious wave of UFO sightings, he initiated high-level contact with the US government. He wanted to know if the Americans had been operating any type of covert aircraft in British skies. My head of division wrote to the American embassy and he asked, in view of these UFO sightings and in view of the rumours about Aurora, whether the Americans had operated any sort of aircraft that might explain what had been seen. The response Nick received was nothing short of astonishing. It seemed that the Americans wanted to know if the British had any black projects involving a new type of aircraft. Nick realised that the American government had been investigating UFOs of their own. Back in 1993, Nick Pope had done everything in his power to solve Britain's UFO mystery. He had asked every question he could at every level, from members of the public to expert eyewitnesses. He'd examined radar tapes and satellite data. He'd even rattled the cage at the highest levels of the British and American governments. Only to discover that while Britain was conducting its investigation, it seemed the Americans were chasing reports of similar UFOs in their own skies. Publicly, the Americans have been out of the UFO game since 1969, when Project Blue Book was closed. This fascinating document here from the Assistant Chief